the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's lift our hands and bless us. Let the name of the Lord Jesus, let it be an exceptional time tonight. Hallelujah. It's my joy to be back home. I'm happy to be back home. And um, it's been a week full of great activities and happy seeing the hand of God and the mighty things that he's doing I want to challenge us just before we start our teaching tonight that we never get too familiar with the things that God is doing the training of the saints the equipping of the saints is something that we must all together submit ourselves to hallelujah there is power in being built there is power in being trained because as we are sharpened as we are trained then we become more aligned and we become more usable it's not enough to be available you must be usable being usable is a product of alignment and it's a product of training and so I appreciate every single one of us tonight and all those who are following us online we love you and i ask that the lord will bless us in jesus name amen i am ever conscious of the fact that as a man of god every time god gives you access to people um, the primary responsibility is to be able to supply enlightenment if as a pastor or as whatever leader head of a church ministry organization you are not actively contributing to bringing enlightenment in people then you are wasting their time it's a total waste of time i don't care what else happens in that church if at the end of every service the people leave the way they came no growth no wisdom no access to power no enlightenment then uh, it's a total waste of time total waste of time hallelujah and by the grace of god we thank god for investing so much of his grace upon our lives such that every time we come we are guaranteed that we will rise from one dimension of knowledge to the other in the name of jesus i'm teaching on the dominion mandate part one 
the dominion mandate i think this is very timely and it's very important that we come into this understanding it's been a phrase that has been greatly used in the body of christ it's been largely abused um, because it's been used without understanding praise the lord and i'm trusting that god will grant us grace revelation chapter 5 we'll read two verses 9 and 10 help us tonight holy spirit the dominion mandate revelations 5 verse 9 and 10 are we there it says and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed us unto God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation we're going to read verse 10 together one to read and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth one more time and has made us unto our God kings and priests there are certain doctrines please listen just a little theological background there are certain doctrines that are considered foundational to the understanding of any believer when you get born again you don't just grow haphazardly you don't grow carelessly it matters the doctrines that are introduced to a believer at his encounter with christ this will guide your growth the efficiency of your growth or otherwise are we together not every dimension of knowledge is needed at every time it is important that the informations that are supplied believers especially as they grow are strategic enough to be able to make their growth useful it's like building i always give this analogy after you lay a foundation the next thing is not a zinc is that true if you put a zinc you're going to destroy the building you can't say you have a house a zinc is part of the requirement but there will be a time for zinc so theologically speaking there are excuse me certain foundational truths um, and I believe that one of the reasons why believers are not very mature is because there is a haphazard communication of spiritual truths and realities it is my considered opinion and this is also theologically agreed that when believers come into Christ the first thing that they ought to know is to have a thorough understanding of what we know and believe to be the finished work of Jesus that is the very next foundational understanding there's no point teaching them about money there's no point teaching them about service in the ministry if they stumble across a service where that is being taught then that's all right but where you are training and building people there is a system so they must understand the the realities of redemption number two they must be open to the ministry of prayer any believer that gets born again must be open to the ministry of prayer that is the system with which their spiritual senses are activated if you do not give them an opportunity to be open to the ministry of prayer that activity will become very boring because they will become carnally minded are we together number three they must be open to the ministry of the holy spirit now technically speaking everything we deal with in the kingdom revolves around the ministry of the holy spirit but i mean they must be introduced consciously to the possibility of a relationship with a person called the holy spirit they must begin to train their spiritual senses to hear god to understand the word to interpret scripture that's the fourth thing they must be exposed to the ministry of the word the ministry of the word its power to transform their minds then several other things now become very useful when these basics are in place then when you come in with things like kingdom service when you now come in with things like 
the anointing when you come in with other aspects you know the deeper things of the spirit they have been able to have access to a solid foundation but the moment you get a believer born again and the next thing you are drumming them on principles of money financial reward breakthrough restoration as good as those things are they rape sorry to use that word but that is the best expression they rape that believer and put that believer in a very vulnerable position nothing that brings a sequence of growth will interest the believer again are we together now because the believer just wants to receive to sit down and learn i'm not interested or someone just gets born again and you are not exposing them to the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit it looks powerful until you watch them misuse it they will access the anointing and begin to walk in many things but lack of character will destroy it are we together now and sooner or later those people will tell you two months they will tell you they are called into ministry six months later they are already in trouble it's important that believers be guided i am persuaded that this should be the factors that should be examined even in appointing responsibilities in the body of christ paul taught us that one who is a bishop a pastor and that applies to anyone a deacon and ordained worker there should be some level of track record of staying in the house of god i'm just giving us a background this is the challenge with celebrities and the house of god celebrities those who were maybe in the world and were celebrity musicians celebrity businessmen when they come into the church they expect the same spotlight correct the same honor so you look at this guy and let's assume he was once a very worldly musician for instance are we together now and then he now gives his life to christ and in a bid to honor him you graduate him unnecessarily into realms and dimensions he has not afforded he sits down where the ministers are sitting you give him offering help and raise offering he stands on stage and you see him speaking babylon you know that this guy he has not he, he has not stabilized he's just barely entering the kingdom but you appreciate it because he has been a celebrity let me tell you whoever you are when you come in the kingdom you must start and join that line you see that yes honor be given to you for your for exposing your value to be rewarded but there must be that system of building i think this is a word from god to many people already all these hilarious ordinations hilarious laying on of hands hilarious appointment of people someone gets born again in two weeks he's ordained sent somewhere we must be careful it will lead to a lot of inefficiency children leading children babes the bible called them unfruitful in the handling of the word of god and so when challenges rise up for on account of the word's sake they do not sustain the spiritual stamina because they have no track record in the spirit they have not learned honor they have not learned authority they have not learned that there are seasons in believers lives where you have to stand they have not like people like watchman Nee would teach they have not learned to sit they have not learned to walk they have not learned to stand one brutal attack and their whole life is finished completely everything are we blessed this kingdom is built through a system and it is important please hear me the way you build matters are we together in construction we know there are there are structures that are built by careless architects and builders and you see that structure no stability is bent anyhow a little rain and half of it everything falls down right to the louvers and there are others that are that are solid like the buildings in dubai meters high above the sky and they are they are with razor sharp precision they were built intentionally every house is built by some man but the bible says god is the builder he says and i will build my church the only thing that is built from the top is the grave 
never forget this that the only thing you start building from the top is the grave i just felt stirred in my spirit to put that because i want us to experience breakthrough i want us to love god and know god but there is nothing that will replace sitting down to learn sequentially to grow especially for those of us who probably got born again this year or we rededicated our lives and all of that and we thank god for the kind of grace in this house someone can be born again and in two weeks is already on fire and people see you and say pastor and then you now enlighten yourself from that flattery and say wow that means this is speed no men cannot see the heart except it is given to them hmm? men see the outward appearance so their interpretation is based on what they are seeing ah the last time this guy held a mic in one fellowship the way he prayed in tongues and then you use the construction of the tongues to mean he has graduated in the spirit is a joke the level of stamina it takes to be trusted with people is is a dimension that only god can approve very few people know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to host an anointing and to even lead people matter matter you are worried and offended about several things but it says one thing is needful hmm? god must work on you work on you that's why you see us keep teaching let me tell you there are people in this ministry by the grace of god and with all humility i can select people at random at random and not not to be cynical most of them would qualify to be resident pastors in many circles and many denominations but they are not even leaders god is saying sit down I'm ministering to someone because you look at everybody around you this one reverend this one started his church yesterday this one this and you you are not even even an esco in a department i'm saying is it that lord you are not seeing me huh do, do, are, are you trying to say i'm not making progress whoever told you appointment is proof of progress If the lifespan of your commitment in the house of God is to be seen and to be appointed into offices then it's a disaster so you see people fight like politics oh there is a vacancy that vacancy is a deacon and you see everybody coming to greet the pastor pastor good afternoon I just came to bless you and to let you know what is happening behind your back I've got you covered that's a manifesto that's 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 political party when Jesus was going to select people that he would train the Bible says he spent the whole night Jesus the fountain of wisdom knew to appoint men to trust them with responsibility is a serious thing you judge by the eye and see Eliab and say surely this is God's anointed and God said uh -uh, that's not how I choose oh look at the kind of people Jesus fasted all through the night to choose you fast through the night and choose weaklings thieves fearful people why fast do you have to fast to see them he fasted and saw what they would become as weak as they were they were already scribes and pharisees jumping and saying look just restructure our mindset and that's all we have reduced the journey and god looked at a tax collector wicked man very stupid people and said this is exactly what i'm looking for saul is on his way to damascus and god is looking at him what an apostle killing people you see the way god sees ba let me teach you something if you don't learn this you will make too many mistakes in your leadership and your church there are people seated here inside and outside let me tell you the dimensions they are walking in the spirit probably even me have not entered those dimensions yet they come quietly you see them sit down they are watching they are learning reminds me of how many how students are the real person who is taking first position is somewhere he will write every note with the example and the person who is second to the last 
Yeah, I know that example. It came from uh, that that uh, book. I, I know this man. I know the book he's reading. Yet he's taking second to the last at the end of the exam. But the one who is diligent will come and sit down and listen. Never promote people emotionally. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Don't love people too much to unnecessarily expose them to levels. And do not flatter yourself into thinking, I think I am fit for a level. Let God himself accredit you. It says, Paul, a man approved, approved. There are illegal people. The same way there are jam centers. There are authorized jam centers. Correct? There are authorized hospitals. There are authorized drugs. And every authorized drug has a registration number. We call it NAFDAC registration number. Correct? Whether the drugs are big or small. Now, there are certain people who can connive with other nations and smuggle in drugs. Put the drugs and put camels on them. Do all kinds of things. It does not make it legal. The fact that it was successfully smuggled. Those drugs in themselves may not kill. But they have not been vetted by the institute that was put called NAVDAC. That's how it is spiritually. You can get up and move and yet you have not been approved. Let me tell you. When people are approved on earth, they are assigned thrones in heaven. A throne is a symbol of authority those thrones are not just thrones like they are thrones that affirm anointings and mantles and graces that's why somebody can come no rema no revelation but there is a track record and a throne that backs their words they can speak they can stand on behalf of heaven and speak and plead your case and turn around something that has no business turning around and you wonder how are they doing it brothers and sisters i want you to preach to yourself i receive grace to stay until he accredits me i receive grace to stay can you turn it into a prayer in one minute i believe that is the spirit of god that just led me to communicate that i receive grace to stay pray oh the head of department prayer is not seeing me are the leaders not seeing me is his pastor femi not seeing me worship team are they not seeing me to give me songs no never lift yourself stay for when the season of appearing comes let me tell you no mortal man can stop you pray i receive grace pray pray Pray, pray, pray. Lord, let me be built to its finest. Let me be one of your finest battle axes on earth. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Not half baked. Thoroughly furnished. Unto all good works. I receive the grace to stay. I receive the grace to learn. I receive the grace to be built. It may take time, but I stay. I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will get to our, our teaching proper. But I'm just stressing this. Oh, God is calling you to be a kingdom financier. And all of a sudden, you are killing yourself, trying to wear every clothes, trying to buy every watch. Don't die for nothing. God is calling you to be a prophet. And all of a sudden, you are forcing yourself to see. You are not seeing anything. This thing is not trial and error. Keep walking with God. One day it will be like a joke. You will wake up one morning into a portal. A vista just opens up and says, so this is what happens. Until then, you force yourself, you will see something. And what you see will destroy your life, destroy others. You will bring all sorts of things because you are not trained. 
I watch people and let me tell you this is with all humility I watch people and I see them not able to hold the sword of the spirit I see the disaster that they cause with those swords it takes a skill to hold that sword the Bible says with wise counsel make war it, that you have a sword does not just mean you no 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 Solomon held that sword in such a way that they could know which child you, you have to hold it well otherwise you will kill people when you are trained by God as a leader you will know when to talk and when to keep quiet they may expect you to speak but you have been so trained full of knowledge yet silent look at Moses a man who was heavily anointed yet he never prophesied he kept quiet when the spirit on him came on 70 people none of them could stand yet all of that was in one man and he had self-control see a lot of childishness that goes on in the body of Christ I'm preaching to someone some of those things look like the pathways for recognition you will never this honor let me tell you is a mantle it comes from heaven with a track record you can fake it and try to gather a lot of mediocres around your life but if there is no this this ranking you see increase it is God God left it to himself plant water you can increase yourself are we together men can look at your life and know you are growing preaching there are nine things I won't teach you today there are nine things that characterize the ministry of the world nine preaching or teaching what we call pulpit ministry is the eighth of the ninth eight of it are we together so the ability to preach well is only one over nine nobody gets a with one over nine there are many other aspects are we together one of the requirements is to have the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you must you must there are times god exposes you to things you have no business going through it has nothing to do with you that is the price you pay for carrying the anointing for the people it is the burden of the people he puts upon your spirit you must taste of it to qualify to minister to them yet there are all kinds of people moving around and will tell you i am this and that i am apostle this i am prophet this i am that and that and your name is emeka i say yes and then the man means that because you said it correctly he is a prophet and all kinds of blunders begin to come you break people's marriages destroy people's destiny because of imbalance all sorts of things i i am a kingdom millionaire i i don't take water in a, in a sachet again i have to use bottle because i'm going far my destiny is far and we do stupid things in the name of i believe in seeing well but faith is not foolishness now let me tell you the danger here is when you look around you you will see very few people subscribing to this pattern and it can intimidate you you are human there are times you sit and say lord but give me an opportunity to and god says you are about to derail you don't know the honor i'm bringing to your life you now want to destroy all run away from all this balloon success up today down tomorrow anointed today you crash tomorrow no god can give you consistency 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 the average ministry that is started in Nigeria eight out of every ten close before the year is finished yet you see the convictions God told me I saw it so 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 our vision I saw this and that and in that vision we are going to the nations <sighs> if you do not understand what I'm teaching you tonight your life will be a track record of blunders sincere encounters that will never manifest in the earth realm till you go to be with the Lord I want to save you years of pain are you ready to pray now open my eyes lift your voice and pray open my eyes open my eyes but thou oh Lord had a shield for me my glory you're the lifter up of my head but thou, O oh Lord, had 
a shield for me My glory, the lifter up of my head Pray, but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me My glory, the lifter up of my head Hallelujah. Listen to me. There were two brothers in the Bible, born of the same father, we understand, called Cain and Abel. Two of them went to sacrifice and they thought they were doing the same thing. Listen, every time there is no response from heaven, find out why. Because he said, if you did it rightly, I have no bias for you if you did it rightly. There are dimensions I have not entered as a person. I don't get responses from heaven. It's a sign that there is a level of alignment I need to step into. Because Benihim will come under the same condition and there will be a response from heaven. There are, there are things I now do and I get responses from heaven that I did not get a response yesterday. Use the response from heaven to prove it's a sign. You've been doing everything around your life. There is no corresponding response. Why continue to flatter yourself? I'm not doubting that you are a prophet. But I'm saying sit down. You carry what you call prophecy. You will never go to the nations that way. He cannot commit the heart of kings to you. Oh, I'm a pastor. Call me pastor. Don't call me brother. I'm not a brother. I'm a pastor. Settle down. The Bible says they shall call you ministers of our God. It's not a name you invent for yourself. It's an inevitable product of a track record. There are many of us already fighting superiors in different ministries. They are not allowing men to see me. If you ever think that way, it's a stupid thought from Antichrist. It's from the devil. The Bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Are we together? I just feel we should pray one more prayer again. Say, Lord, I will wait until that grace comes. I will wait until I step into the fullness of the grace and the ministry. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I will pray. I will wait. I am proud of where I am. My contemporaries may go ahead of me, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. There is a making. There is a making. Lakata kata praka sodo baka yada balata. Being tried as gold. Being tried as gold. The gold of Oswe. The finest of them. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the school. Don't you know in his hands? Have the keys to eternal life. Hey, a little me, a little me. Soon your day will come. Stop working you, changing everything. Will you swallow your pride tonight? Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little here, a little here. Soon your day will dawn. Is that worth it? Oh, oh, oh. 
So stop crying around and looking for invitation. Invite me. I can sing. Pastor, invite me to your church. I promise you won't be disappointed. No. No. Stay in the secret place. Let everyone go. Remain there. He will sharpen you. Mm. Sharpen you. Then when you come out, you will be like the gold of offer. The finest of it. Finest of it. No guessing. Listen. You see, I had a vision day before yesterday when Ife, the great land of Ife, and I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw certain things about my future. And I saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what I was working now like child's play. After that vision, I just laid down. I said, Lord, thank you. This is the exact motivation I need. Because you see, when men clap for you, you need to see something far. That will make where you are walking now look like shadows i said that's right that's right it is dangerous to have a measure of result the enemy of success is the last one not failure because it can keep you i can prophesy too it's a little but at least i'm there i can minister too i lay hands out of 10 people at least somebody must be healed and you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of ten is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says sharing is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the art head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you just because someone acknowledged you and just called you daddy or called you mommy or called you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and say leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season then a thousand cubits is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly to tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that god can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little thing a little girl so 
in your day we go Start working Changing everything yeah. Hallelujah I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards Many of you never know I've not announced one to you Several awards You will never see one on my table I don't trust those things I thank God for them But I don't believe them you see if you if 10 of you write a test ah huh, over 100 and you get 12 over 100 and you are the highest you can get prize for first position but did you pass so you have to you don't just say i'm the one leading this thing how far with respect to god's expectation we are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen we are talking of ancient portals opened up hosting god like gods on the earth we are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously not all this jamboree and talking and jacking we are talking of putting nations under the feet of jesus stopping the sun to rise over nations until jesus becomes lord joshua did it When you get satisfied with little results oh she got healed oh i prayed for the woman she got pregnant oh i prayed for that dead baby he came back to life you have pegged yourself and you will never rise far am i wasting your time if this is all we do today can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue lord i'm not leaving your presence not at this time Thank you for what you have done. But Lord, there is more. Thank you for the miracles. But there are higher levels of fire. There are higher levels of power. There are higher dimensions, rankings in the spirit. Listen, let me tell you the kind of training and the kind of weapon. Do you know North Korea has weapons? 
we've not seen the potentials yet they have been building it nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials no we've seen the bombs we've seen the ballistic missiles america has weapons that nobody in the world has seen he said thou at my battle axe my weapons of war with you i will beat down nation he didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle axe listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good greek and hebrew words it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of god prophetically you have all of god but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but i'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are i know you have tried but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building This is a, a shake up and a wake up. There are still people in our families, as anointed as we are, darkness is still looming around them. That's a sign that you are not refined enough. Are we together? You are doing well as a pastor, but you know there is still witchcraft in your family. You even acknowledge it. So what is wrong with that light? There is a way that light can be so bright. You will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say i'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door i found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and it, hold, hold on I, I i will you crush the gates of hell into pieces listen when john g lake was alive he made spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together ew kenyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we are making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down say call one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move lord i thank you for this dimension and this grace but then open more frontiers open more frontiers and all of a sudden a time will come they will say you are zeus or hermes they say this person pastor alpha is not a normal human being again what dimension is this what level of grace and unction is this i look at my life today people send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of god and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever i get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if i continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a herbalist forget about power 30 minutes of praying in the spirit and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food 
this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can gist and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god you open this bible you are yawning you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price i'm i'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret god punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them blood is a sacrifice hallelujah something came on me for you tonight. please let's not play games with this thing if you are in it go for it go for it fast for it pray for it study for it sit down for it sit down for it don't rush anything I assure you one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years there's nothing called wasted time with him please sit down you need to advise yourself tonight myself sit down myself sit down myself sit down myself sit ah you are papa thank god myself sit down you are mama you are deaconess you are prophetess you are apostle you are this myself sit down then you will command levels of power and you will stand and watch what God is doing through you and you will say my God what is this please be seated in Jesus name if I had my way we would just pray till the service is finished because when the water is the Bible says you strike while the iron is hot as it's hot like this you strike it let everything that is not God fly out of that 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 making let's touch on something tonight But this message is really a message that struck hard i believe there are specific people this word is for god is asking you to wake up and eli is asking you to go back to sleep you have to choose who to believe oh at your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of texts an apostle of uncommon grace and power I thank God for it but I just look at the text and I laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice program one program here one event here one crusade here one conference here you won't grow that way a, a conference is not you won't grow that way many of us are obsessed passionate you have a church of two members there are 10 crusades 10 conferences in one year what are you doing be honest with yourself nobody grows that way you sit down and you are sharpened and filed you know how a razor blade is when you buy a new razor blade you touch it on a paper that's how it what God is saying. You see God lifting all these our people now. Worship team. 
gradually gradually when when they all come to me i tell them go and sit down because i'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit you can feel sharp because you cut wood but what you are going to be cutting are metals not woods metals metals there are machines that ride through metals there are machines that cut stones do you know the the, the strength of those materials you cut through those brah, just cut everything there are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods they will hook and the machine will stop turning that's nonsense and inferior product it's a sign that that was not a good product but when you buy it you buy something it will cut through rocks and pieces them that's what god is telling me to. by the time you stand in all the millions you are looking for you will be so valuable oh I, at my age i think i should have built a house don't worry just stay somebody will bring a car key bring a house key bring all kinds of things and give you be careful unhealthy comparison will destroy you we live in a world that is very carnal i teach you success principles we just finished success systems but be careful unhealthy comparison at my age i am 40 at my age i'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it I, I don't know but god must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble Lord. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part one in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of god's creation and when god i think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes god doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery i've said it many people would think it's witchcraft if you see me in your dream wake up and rejoice something serious happened to you hallelujah you must have the arsenals when you are discouraged what do you have in your spiritual arsenal is there a message is there a tool i tell you what to that person who has not programmed you don't prepare for battle at the war front you station them there are tools whenever i feel that i'm losing spiritual favor there are tools already there are tools there are tools there are tools god gave me tools tools whenever you feel you are lazy that fasting grace is not there i tell you one correct message listen to it in the night where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always god's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you're already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged 
you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down hear messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises hallelujah i feel like praying no this thing is on me i feel like I wish I were alone. I feel like praying. Let me tell you how what to do. Whenever your spirit is stirred, don't go to bed. Pray immediately. Make sure you can sleep praying, but don't waste it. There are times this kind of things happen to you alone. You are listening to a message every time. Every time because the moment you feel it is like a spiritual feeling station. Something is happening. Prayer is like opening the tank. You see that? You open the tank. Oh God, feel me. Let that anointing come. Let that fire come. And then it comes upon your spirit. These are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong. Some of you, after hearing this now, you now relax back to carnality. You see that? Carnality doesn't mean something evil. You just come down to the... This is what it means to be in the spirit. Your spirit is alive. Ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will burn it up lord we bless you for that which you will do in our lives in the name of jesus hallelujah Koinonia is the place of hunger. You must be hungry to find expression in this place. This is the place for those who know that there is something more. There is always something more. The character of God is such that when he meets you, he fills your current hunger and leaves you with a greater one. And that's what pushes you back to pursue him. Lord, you are everything that we have. You are everything. Mm. You are everything. You are everything. I'd like you to pray just one prayer before you sit down. Say, Lord, you have my all. If per adventure I have taken part of me and shared it with any other thing aside from you i repent lift your voice this is not the time to look at your neighbor lord i will bow to you to no other god but you Sing, I will lay down my idols and thrones that I have made, and all that has taken my heart. Listen, there are many things that have ways of captivating the heart of man. But Lord, we will bow. do something in our lives that has never been done before tonight in the name of Jesus let this not be church as usual in the mighty name of Jesus open up your capacity to receive there is more the Holy Ghost can do in and through your life this is not the best of you Jesus, more of you, more of you, it's truly more of you, more of you, Jesus, more of you.
please sit down if you can let's get to the word all about you it's all about you Jesus it's all about you yes Lord it's all about you Lord it's all about you Jesus. Psalms 139. Shalabakora sembradina. The last few weeks we've been having unusual angelic activities in our midst. And every time there is an unusual activity of angels. It is because of prophetic things that the Lord is doing in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. Thank you. If there is any if there is any prayer I have for you is that nothing will take his place in your life. If there is any prayer I won't pray for you for a car or for a house or for a husband those things are, i will insult you if i pray for you for those things when you have him i'm telling you you have everything you see many of you may sit down you're wondering why why does it look like god is all it's one thing to be born again but it's another thing to be addicted. Totally. 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 Where you are not just giving him your hands or your lips. But he takes a hold of your life. You're not just saying, Lord, this is a portion of my heart. But he has everything. If he's not Lord of all, then he's not even interested in being Lord. And this is what we seek to cultivate in our hearts. Your intimacy with the Holy Spirit will make many things happen for you in life. See, let me tell you something. If many people ever knew that the secret of what they were looking for is hidden in the person of the Holy Spirit, men will stop chasing after shadows. Do you know that the Holy Spirit made Jesus the Christ? Do you know that the Holy Spirit empowered the patriarchs and the prophets of old? See, I want the Holy Spirit to be real to you. He's not just some textbook or some wind or fire. The Holy Spirit is a person. When you know him, you are the greatest man in the universe. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you forever. Lord, I'll forever be chasing after you. When men chase after so many things, I'll be chasing after you. This is my commitment. That I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. Hallelujah. I have a message tonight that I pray will touch your heart. And cause you to love God like never before. Hallelujah. Tonight I want us to pray. So I'll just teach very briefly. I'm teaching tonight on what I title The Evidence of Genuine Intimacy with God. The Evidence of Genuine Intimacy.
the evidence our call as believers listen to me please listen let me say it loud and clear to the hearing of everyone God's priority in life listen his priority for you is not to give you a certificate or a husband or a wife or a car or breakthrough or marriage he wants to bless you with all of these things but listen to me his priority is that you will know him the primary call of a believer is that you conform to the stature the character the fullness of the measure of Christ this is what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 it was on account of this assignment he gave gifts unto men some apostles prophets teachers evangelists pastors for the equipping of the saints that they the saints will come into this oneness hallelujah if your priority listen if your pursuit for god is tied to anything other than him there is a rude disappointment waiting for you at the end of the journey i assure you hallelujah there's so many people who chase god because of the problems in their families or the 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 challenges in society or fear because of the insecurity but you must pursue him for who he is so our call write it our call as christians is to number one conform conform to the character the stature the nature to conform and then number two in partnership with the holy spirit to be an extension of the ministry of jesus upon the earth in partnership with the holy spirit this is why we call this koinonia intimacy our intimacy with the holy spirit brings us to a place of oneness we know his ways listen listen the greatest thing you should celebrate in koinonia is not the miracles thank god for the wonderful miracles and the works of jesus but did you know that a man can just have gifts and really not know god the bible says he showed his way to moses but his acts to the nation of israel and we live in a generation where men and women are captivated and there's a place for the miraculous is God's biblical tool for publicity that men will come and see what Jesus is doing of his acts to know him this is where the men are separated from the boys because knowing God comes with a price it's not cheap it's not free it will constrain you and it will cost you something it will cost you to lay aside your ambition it will cost you to lay aside a lot of things because you will not share his place with any other but when you do happy are you because in it you will find life you will find true fulfillment hallelujah i've always wondered why certain people seem to have a depth of intimacy with the holy spirit when you come around them you are captured immediately by a hunger for god hallelujah there are certain people like that they must not be praying once you come around just the circumference of their presence there is a hunger that captures you you go back crying their presence introduces a reality the existence of a personality they give life to this mystery called God in the earth realm when you look at them the way they speak 
there's something about their life they don't look like humans they may even be cracking jokes but there is a oneness there is an evidence hallelujah there are several believers that claim they know the holy spirit we live in a generation where everyone believes they know the holy spirit but then if i know pastor jakes there should be an evidence of our friendship and our oneness is that correct there's no evidence in the life of many believers that they have genuine intimacy with the holy spirit we talk we sing we call his name take your place take your place who is the yo who is the person you are talking about let me tell you something many people do not desire to really know god beyond the nominal level of christianity and the average christian in nigeria has a crippled understanding and desire for god there's no platform to put a fire for god the average church in this country teaches us that once you just know the basic principles of god that are responsible for getting life moving on that's all right and while that is true and that is good those are the fundamentals and sometimes we run into the mistake of camping around the god who was but we forget that there are other dimensions the god who is and even the one who is to come he said holy is the lord god who was but he didn't just stop in his greatness of yesterday he's ever unfolding and he requires that men begin to seek him the god who is a revelation of that which he seeks to communicate to his people in the now and that there is more to come in ezekiel ezekiel saw the cherubims crying holy right until revelation in the isle of patmos john saw them and they had not stopped how many hundreds of years they were still calling because every time they will see a new dimension of him that will compel them to worship and so it's very sad when you see the average christian in nigeria there is this coldness i'm not talking of backsliding i'm talking of a lack of passion and a desire to see that there can be more in god hallelujah and so many people sit down and we are satisfied with where we are and even when we sing songs like more of you when we sing songs like i love you when we sing songs like show me more you know all these kinds of things we really do not mean it from the depth of our hearts you know why because there is no evidence there is no evidence the lord began to talk to me and he said son there should be evidence evidence listen if you know how majestic the presence of god is let me tell you something there must be a signature upon your life that you are a man of his presence this is what brings the anointing of the holy ghost many people try to look for the anointing now without the holy spirit himself hallelujah but god designed it in such a way that authentic grace is a derivative of your intimacy with the holy spirit is your reward for encountering him when angels begin to manifest in this place there is an evidence in the earth realm that shows that there are angelic activities and so i i am very disturbed about a believer who is seemingly born again and filled with the holy ghost seemingly progressing in god and then there is no evidence hallelujah so many people sing all kinds of songs so many people pray for hours so many people spend time roaming around but there is no evidence in their lives if jakes has a perfume and i hug him and i hold him or i wear his clothes for long 
is it true that when i pass you you will know hallelujah shouldn't there be a fragrance of his majesty shouldn't there be a deposit a leftover a sign that you were with him the bible says the disciples were with jesus to the point that their physical appearances were altered judas had to use a kiss to identify who was jesus among them they had come into oneness koinonia the bible says when they saw peter speaking to the jerusalem council they looked at him and they said is this not a fisherman but he had assumed a level of oneness with his master that he had begun to manifest like him how many of you have seen two people who are together a protege and a mentor and later you see him begin to talk like that person act like that person that is a symbol hallelujah you can just hear a man of god preach and you know this is a pastor in living faith or this is a pastor in deeper life there is an evidence i'm asking you a question tonight what is your evidence what evidence do you have to convince the world that you are truly a man that has the presence of god upon your life there must be a genuine evidence if it is true that your prayer is to god almighty if it is true that you love him the way you sing if it is true that you have passion should there not be a signature in your life that demonstrates to the world the name christian was an encapsulation that was giving us an evidence a symbol certain people behave like jesus so much so that they were given a name christian every sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday we have millions of people all over nigeria trooping to different churches different camps different um, um, um places of worship auditoriums and you ask them where are you going to they say i'm going to worship they've been doing that for years 10 years 20 years they've given birth to children but you look at their life there is no evidence of genuine intimacy they pray in tongues they call his name they stand on stage and we preachers do it you say holy spirit the one i know the one i love but there is a distance in between you and the person you are talking about have you seen anybody claim to know a stranger and the way the person is talking you know this person is not used to this stranger or this person is not used to the person he's talking about many people truly do not know the holy spirit because when you know him i used to hear catherine coolman cry benny hinn said it that catherine coolman used to cry and say he's all that i have he's my best friend it doesn't make sense until you have encountered him listen let me tell you something when jesus appeared to me i knew why the apostles loved him to death hallelujah i knew why these guys ran with a passion for god the Bible says even in Hebrews 11 that some people had the opportunity to escape but they refused as a demonstration of their commitment to him. What is your evidence? We sing beautiful songs about his presence and his majesty. Beautiful songs. Breathe on me I look to you for life Breathe on me, I look to you for life. Every time you're singing, people know if you really know the person you are talking about. You can come and sing, you can come and shout, you can come and preach, you can jump around. But I'm telling you the truth. There is an evidence. And tonight I'm going to show you, we'll be examining from, our, from God's word. And I trust that this brief examination will create a passion in us because at the end of it some of us will find out that we need to go back into the place of genuine hunger we either left god on the way in pursuit for many things hallelujah 
there must be an evidence the first thing that happens when you begin to expose yourself to the presence and the glory of God in the glory I will stand I will stand and lift my hands in the glory I'll receive every miracle you have for me it's in your glory I will stand Lord I will stand and I will lift my hands in your glory I'll receive every miracle that you have for me so take my heart and mold it take my mind this is my prayer Lord transform it take my will tonight conform it to yours to yours oh Lord this is our prayer tonight take our hearts and mold it take our minds Lord transform it take our will conform it Bible calls him it says that God is light and in him there is no shadow of turning so when you truly step into the light of his glory listen the first evidence listen is that there is an exposition of the true state of your heart there is an unveiling there is a revealing of who you truly are in the light of him until you go to his presence whatever you call yourself you are telling lies his presence the bible says that he is the revealer the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart until you have encountered the glory of god you truly do not know your true state isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 the bible says in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah although a prophet i saw the lord he said when i saw the lord i saw him high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple and the bible says when isaiah saw these things he said woe is me if anyone had told him before that encounter that woe is you isaiah you would have insulted the person but the glory of god reveals the true state that men cannot see that pulpit can hide are you listening to me that suits can hide that grammar and english can hide the glory of god opens up the true you and reveals to you the true state of your heart this is how you know one who is a man with intimacy with the holy ghost he exposes the state of your heart and brings you to a point where you find out that you truly are inadequate without him regardless of what your revelation of your authority is you come to a point where you realize that god if you do not have mercy on me then i am a dead man without you this is what brings these kinds of songs all about you it's all about you it's all about you Jesus.
many years I was preaching, doing great things, signs and wonders and miracles. But the day Jesus appeared to me, I think for over a period of one year, I was not myself. It was as if I was the most filthy person on the earth. Now, it's impossible to describe some of these things. His majestic presence. When you stand before him and see him in the beauty of his holiness. His majestic presence. It does something to you. You will never be the same. Let me tell you something. No matter how hardened you are. No matter how hardened you are. The human spirit was designed to respond to the majestic presence of his maker. And if you truly encounter his presence, something will happen radically in your life. This issue of coming to church and loving God and not seeing a need for change and adjustment is a sign of the absence of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Psalms 139. Let's look at a few scriptures. I want to be very brief so we can pray. This is not a teaching, really. It's just an exhortation. Psalms 139 verse 23. The psalmist, a man who we know to be a man of his presence, had this to say. 139 verse 23. Search me, O God. Stop. Look up. Do you know what it takes for a man to open up himself and say, God, probe me. In this country, when they told politicians that they want to probe them and find out their accounts, did they agree? You know the level of honesty and brokenness it takes for a king to open up himself before God and say, Lord, search me. He says, search me, O oh God. I'm not hiding it from you. Search me. People can call me names. People can call me a great person. But before you search me, this is an evidence. An evidence of genuine intimacy with the presence of God. That consistently you are aware of your inadequacy. Not unto guilt and condemnation. Are you listening to me? But unto a passion imparting upon you reverence and genuine respect for his majesty is that an evidence in your life if that has not happened in your life then you see that there is no genuine intimacy with the holy spirit like you claim there is no hiding it this is a clear universal litmus test it should work for everybody because the more you see him the bible says you are changed but for you to be changed god will show you your present state and compare it with his own and you will be compelled man only embraces change if you show him that what is about to embrace is greater than what he's living otherwise he will not leave it hallelujah so you must see a higher light the bible says when saul was on his way to damascus full of passion he was going to go and kill the christians the Bible says a light. A light appeared to him. In an instant, Saul said, Lord. He called him Lord. That's the byproduct of an encounter. That a man who has been hardened, who went to collect permission to kill people in a moment. This is what happens when an unbeliever comes to sit down in a place. If that environment has genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit, it should not leave that person the same. You see the reason why many Christians do not have a genuine fire for God? We sit around unbelievers and there is no sign whatsoever. So it's either God is not there or there's something wrong with us. Hallelujah. Jesus met the Samaritan woman just sitting with her in a little conversation. What happened? The glory of God wrapped her in such a way and a manner. The Bible says she even forgot about the issue of fetching water and ran to the city and began to say, come and see a man who has told me all about me. The presence of God. The glory of God. A symbol that your heart is open at all times and you say, Lord, search my heart. 
in other words i'm ready to listen to anything you tell me if you tell me that there is lost hidden in my heart is true you are not a liar if you tell me that there is a state of wickedness hidden in my heart you are true hallelujah it takes a level of genuine brokenness and love for god to come to a point where god can probe your life and you are not ashamed of what the result of his findings will be because we live in a world of psychophancy and lies are you listening to me men have itching ears wanting to hear only what they want it takes men who love god genuinely especially for those of us in ministry when you are in ministry a lot of times our churches are full of liars and psychophants men who always want to say everything the man of god is stealing he's a wonderful lovely man of god the man of god is declaring a counsel that is not consistent with god he's a wonderful man of god the man of god is sleeping around and doing everything he's a wonderful man of god because it's it takes a level of brokenness and here the psalmist shows us one symbol one evidence of a genuine encounter with the presence of god search me O oh god and know my heart you know what it means commune with my heart it's the same word that used for a man knowing a woman know my heart relate with my heart oh god i want to know what your verdict is concerning my heart it says and if there is any wicked way in me he said what lead me out of it this is the first evidence of a genuine encounter genuine intimacy when your intimacy with the holy ghost is genuine this is one of the evidences that should show let me tell you something a man of the secret place will never struggle with a habit or challenge for long you watch him you see something you don't like in a few months he's gone that's a symbol that is a man that understands the power of intimacy with the holy spirit because if you truly have a secret place and you have ears to hear because some people don't have ears the bible says he that has an ear that means some people don't have it he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the church many of us have been so hardened towards the dealings of god every time we go to pray listen and you see this affects your kind of prayer we must graduate from this childish need driven christianity and step into a place of genuine maturity that will bring us power and grace god i pray for myself i pray for my mother i pray for my father i pray for my this i pray for my dad lord do this and that if my auntie doesn't give me money she won't sleep i command arrows of restlessness what kind of thing is that that's the average petition of the church listen let me tell you something if that is the kind of heritage we want to pass to our children then the church is going to have a serious problem in the next five to ten years hallelujah john knox prayed over scotland and he turned and was not talking about himself he said lord give me scotland or i die this is someone's prayer point give me scotland or i die that's a level of brokenness and intimacy with the holy spirit where god's own need becomes your driving force not no longer your own you have so traded away your personal desire and passion to take up that of his majesty and that becomes your prayer point all you are concerned about in the place of prayer is lord what is your heartbeat and i will run in synchrony hallelujah you go and read many books that are written on prayer very few of them are written on prayer for matured believers most of them is just how to get your needs met which is wonderful but let me tell you something you cannot tie your pursuit for god on just your needs being met no god is bigger than that this is the reason why many people's christianity does not last hallelujah one day you are checking an album and you see your father's picture and you see that he was a prayer secretary of one fellowship in 1971 and there's the man in the beer parlor now what happened because the bible says if the foundation be destroyed 
what can the righteous do faulty foundation christianity that is a a derivative of hunger not genuine passion and that's the platform on which many altar calls are made in nigeria hallelujah and so we tell people come this is an end to all your sorrow listen to me i hope you know i believe in the works of jesus christ i believe in the blessings that come we preach it here but this is not god's priority god's priority is that men will come out of a sincere need for god in their lives that's the kind of salvation that will last when you tell someone to come and you are giving him a bet that after six months his life will change and he gives his life to christ and there is someone in their family dies after two weeks he begins to question your your bait to the kingdom hallelujah and you promise the person that the wave is five or six carryover courses and his final result came out and we were still on the board and he has to take it again at that point the person does not see a need to pursue god again you see that because you have you have brought god to be an errand boy whose job is to go and bring things according to our lust and those are the kinds of people the bible says that god cannot commit the true riches of heaven because they will disappoint god they are the kind of people that will never walk in authentic power you know why it will destroy them hear me i tell you the truth if you truly truly want to walk in glory you must open up your heart for god to search i do this all the time people call me names people say a lot of good things thank god for that i receive text messages all the time sometimes i pick up the text messages and i drop it on the floor and i lie down on the carpet i say lord this is deceitful because it's not true affect my life breathe on me lord i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life That you refuse to let see at that point the words and the commendations of men have no hold over your life again whether they call you bishop stand or apostle stand or prophet stand or whatever it is those things have no hold over you that means he has had your heart lord i give you my heart Many people gave him his hands. Some gave him some fingers. Some gave him one part of their ears. The other part is in Babylon. One has entered. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. See, those that wrote these songs were not looking for money. They were not trying to produce album to look for money. They had a genuine passion and out of the overflow of their personal hunger they wanted to infect the world with that hunger in an attempt to bring men to the realm that they were relating with god in. but right now we have all kinds of people singing these songs and you know that their hearts are not open let me tell you something the first evidence of an open heart is the complete destruction of pride the first evidence that you have opened up your heart because pride is usually hinged on something you know or you can do the moment you open your heart the first thing god does is to kick out anything that is not him have your way in me that you open up your heart and say lord men call me a great man but what is your what is your analysis hallelujah men call you a great servant of god men call you a great this and that great this and that you see let me tell you something in all sincerity i know i can't stop it but i fear greatly when people begin to give all kinds of commendations because those things can be deceitful listen the greatest enemy of success is the last one you had not failure failure has never made anybody a failure failure always gives you reason to move higher but the last success you had
brings about complacency and a sense of relaxation any man who is a man of intimacy with the holy spirit there is always more you are always dissatisfied with where you are and there is a genuine passion to rise higher it's all about you jesus whether on stage whether as a celebrity he's got your heart you are not saying lord let me keep my heart with you like a bank and when i get to a point where i feel i do not need you i come back and i say lord that heart i gave you is there any can i give you money and collect the heart will your christianity last in the face of honor will it last when all your financial needs are met and 80 percent of your prayer request is gone will it last when the husband finally comes now will it last when the child do you know that for many people the lifetime of their christianity is when they receive a, re a result the moment a result comes that's it no more hunger hallelujah one of our dear ladies in this place was speaking with me a few days ago and was telling me that while she was on campus she was the one who was wayward and not serious and there was a fiery sister when i say fiery i mean genuine fire she was the one who used to hold her hands and say go and pray go and do this go and do that and she told me she said do you know this lady right now that she went to her house and she saw another man married man big man with his wife alive and healthy nothing has happened the wife is at home with the children hallelujah and her small house the man came here to visit her what suddenly happens to it do you know the level of fall it takes for you to forget where you started with god that's a level of absence of intimacy for a long time to a point that the bible says your conscience has been seared with fire that a man falls from a great height to an extent that you who was making a vow you see that's why when you say lord i live for you god will say i'm not yet sure i'm not yet sure open up your heart many of us have tendencies that are enshrined in our heart the day one million enters your hand god will have to use prophetic words to beg you and say remember i'm alive Many of us have not tasted honor. You don't know what it means for people to hold your Bible and move around and say the man of this and that and that and that. And you are like, so there is a possibility to live a higher level of life like this. Can God still find your commitment? Will money or fame or power or any of these things affect your prayer life and affect your sacrifice? Can you still go down on your knees when you are wearing a designer's of one million? Say, Kai, this carpet is rough. The same carpet you knelt down in to bring you the grace and the breakthrough. When you were taking Gary and adding all of this, you had energy. But now you eat chicken, you take pasta and every kind of thing. Italian dishes. Those Italian dishes wiped out the presence of God from your life. The Bible says, whose God is their belly? Take what I'm saying very seriously tonight. Because the kind of church we have is the type that if God does not bring breakthrough after one year, many Christians are leaving him. They are packing their load. God is like one of the many things they are trying. Hallelujah. You know, there's this game people used to play. Ladies, I pass here. No way. I pass here no way so people pass different things and then they came to jesus i pass here once there's no way they they follow to they're looking for something else that's why people resolve to go to herbal medicine when it looks like it's a sign see it's a depth of your conviction when you try and try they say kai come home come home they say let's watch and see what god will do I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold I wouldn't trade you 
for riches untold you are you are my everything so if you are here and per adventure you became a Christian because of these many reasons you'll be born again afresh tonight and get serious because that thing you did was not born again hallelujah Oh God, if you don't give my sister a husband after two weeks, I know you are not Lord. You mean it? Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Listen, I want your Christianity to be rooted on an unshakable foundation. That's why many of you have seen some of your mothers. I've said it here and here again. Many of them loved God. That's why in the height of their blessings and everything, you still see them sing songs. And when there's a bereavement when because you see the kind of christianity that we are teaching the church is such that what do you tell a family that has been bereaved right now i believe in miracles i believe in raising the dead but not every dead person will rise up and you will have to console a dying family so what will you say you enter there and say they don't have faith many pastors do not have messages for bereaved people many pastors don't have messages for people in failure because they have pretended to divorce themselves from those experiences the the luxury of the palace have made them like esther to forget the needs of the people they were called to serve they have intercourse with the king's meat and forgotten the dignity of holiness i pray that none of us will become those kind of people i told god anything i've said it i don't know how many times and i mean it anything that you're going to give me and i cannot give you back I put a prophecy in the air that it should never come to me never and I mean it from the depths of my heart when I say anything let your mind grow wild including my life anything do you love him that much many people want power you want grace but God will search your heart so number one it exposes your heart a heart that is exposed to the scrutiny of God. Tonight we are going to open up ourselves and you cry. Because there are many of us, the way we are going, you may not last in your journey. It's not a curse. It's not a bad statement. But we are not hinged on a foundation that is on Christ. Hallelujah. Write the following scriptures down. You read them. We don't have time. Psalms 51 verse 10. Matthew 13 verse 25. When you are truly growing, John 15 verse 2, it says, He that beareth fruit, my father will prune. So pruning is a sign that you are bearing fruit. Bible says, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. See, let me tell you something, believers. I'm telling you from today and forever you must dedicate time for what i call soul searching with god periodically in your life i know you are the righteousness of god in christ jesus but do you know the bible says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god i want your christian experience to be authentic I cry to God every time. It doesn't make me guilty. It doesn't make me weak. But it makes me strong. Because in my weakness, I'm ever conscious of his power. And so every time I make any boast, I make it out of the understanding that I'm strengthened in my inner man by his grace. Number two. And a byproduct, let me finish up with number one. You will find out you are walking in character. And in the fruits of the spirit when god deals with your heart it doesn't happen at once it happens level by level look at me let me tell you something come my brother you see this gentleman listen this guy can be born again filled with the holy ghost are you listening to me he can be walking in signs and wonders but there are issues in his heart god will not deal with it yet because at that level the dealings will be too heavy and it will discourage his journey. 
Are you listening to me? So God will just keep quiet as if there is nothing there. This is what a lot of believers mistake him. And they think God is careless. Do you realize the Bible says in Matthew, I gave you the scripture. Matthew 13 verse 25. We will not talk about that because of time. The Bible says that when men slept, what happened? They sowed tears among the wheat. And when they got up, the disciples told the master in that parable. They said, should we remove? He said, no, 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 no. Because as you are doing that, the, the, the wheat is still tender. Are you listening to me? And you may not differentiate the wheat and the tear. So if you pull it at that point, you may destroy innocent things. So if God begins to hammer on some things in your life, it may be too drastic and it will discourage you. So God will allow you to continue. So you still have a lot of things that are not consistent with the way of God. There's pride, there's arrogance, there's everything, but you are still seeing the anointing. And every time you go to pray, God doesn't talk to you about it. Hallelujah. Then one day when you grow firm enough to be able to take that level of dealing, now you are praying suddenly. You are praying and you see God begin to tell you, okay, let's deal with this problem of pride or let's deal with this problem of lust. And you are saying, Lord, me, lost. I forgot about the issue of pride or these sins. And God will say, really? Do you trust me? And then God will expose yourself to you. And you will see and you say, Lord, have mercy upon me. And then he will grant you grace and empower you. Up you go to a higher realm in the spirit. This is how men grow. This is what the Bible calls spiritual growth. What many people are doing is numerical advancement in the earth realm, not spiritual growth. They are going around Jericho forever and they are not growing. God bless you, sir. Number two, let's hurry up. When you have genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit, it will conquer unbelief permanently in your life. Communion is the true key to activating the faith of the Son of God in your life. For you cannot trust a man you do not know. See, faith was not designed just to stand. It has to be faith in something or someone. And the degree to which you know that someone is a degree to which you can stand. Look at me. We have been relating for a while, correct? Week after week, months after months, years after years. Based on that, there are some things I can tell you. If I tell you right now, um, this is my daughter, I mean physical daughter, you just laugh. Why? Because you know me, correct? If this place were full of visitors and I tell them, come little girl, this is my daughter. They'll say, ah, ah, can you imagine? Now you are looking as young as, as if she's your younger sister. I can afford to mislead people based on their lack of knowledge of me, correct? But when knowing me gives them an opportunity to walk with me and ascertain certain things about me over time, are you listening to me this is why the place of prayer is the place where the shell of the word breaks forth and releases genuine faith did you hear the testimony of our sister she said she has boldness now let me tell you that boldness came not just by studying the word it came by prayer when you study the word and you go to the place of prayer it gives you boldness the bible says the apostles in acts chapter 4 were praying it was in prayer they asked god they said grant us boldness and so the lord begins to talk to you and while you are praying one scripture that you have been studying hits your spirit and a light come and there is a level there is a reality hallelujah suddenly you are praying or you are in the place of intimacy of worship with the spirit and you begin to hear certain sounds or you begin to see signs of angels will you ever disbelieve that there are angels it has what it has solidified your conviction you see one of the reasons why you hear us speak like this is because we are speaking from a depth of conviction there have been experiences that have crystallized our conviction hallelujah What experience do you have 
that has solidified your, exp your, your Christian experience. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Communion is the key to conquering unbelief. It does that by exposing your spirit to the atmosphere of God's reality. You need to experience God's reality to know that he is able. I like that song that says, God is able to do just what he says he will do. But you listen, you must have a real experience. If your sister has been pregnant and they tell you that the baby is so big and they have to cut her open, you need a miracle, correct? At that point, a dimension of God is about to be experienced. Hallelujah. If it so happens that by whatever supernatural means, she gives birth. Now, the next time you hear someone prophesying and say in the name of Jesus, we command impossible births to happen, will you believe? Your faith has been strengthened. You see how experiences crystallize our knowledge of God. Many of us lack the sufficient experiences. Why do we call someone a general and someone a captain? What's the difference? What's the difference? When the captain hears the sound of a gun, bah, he can panic and he can do all of this. And the general laughs. He said, they've even pointed gun at me one day. I didn't die. So all this nonsense you are doing. Let me tell you something. The psalmist says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. It takes a man, are you listening to me, whose convictions about God has been strong. So all those things, run to the village, run to this, run to this, eh, let's add Christianity and this. It's a sign that you are not convicted. He said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number three. The third evidence of genuine intimacy is freshness of insight and revelation freshness don't tell me you are in intimacy with god and you will not have a message let me tell you something when in all sincerity when i hear men of god come on stage and say well i didn't prepare for this message i really don't even know what to say uh, whatever let's just look at something let me tell you in all sincerity that is a sign that is such a sign of lack of intimacy with the holy spirit because at every time you encounter the holy spirit there is a message if i if i have a way of planning for koinonia to meet every day every day because according to the syllables that we have to cover we are far behind Sometimes people meet me and say, ah, you just finish a ministration. You go for another one. You minister. And then you go and you are talking about different things. And many people do not know that many of my messages are experiences. I share some of them with you to encourage you. Sometimes I'm sleeping, minding myself. Having a sound sleep. And then I see things in the spirit and I wake up and God tells me, share it. That's how messages like commanding results. And so on and so forth came. These things were not just rehearsals. When you are a man of the secret, can I tell you something? When you are a man of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, there is freshness. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for thou art with me and thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of what? My enemies. Ah, I'm quoting the wrong scripture. I thought I'll find what I want in that scripture. Let's go to Psalm. Psalm what have I quoted now? Let's go to Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not, yes, that's the scripture, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, standing, sitting, walking, all they are wrong, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate, they, as a result, what will happen? He shall be like a tree. That is what? Other trees have to wait for rainy season. But this other tree is planted by the rivers. As a result, it yields its fruit in season. And whose leaves does not wither. 
freshness not necessarily newness freshness that's why you can hear people like kenneth e hagin teaching on faith for over 30 years and you have series and series every time a message goes stale it's a sign that it did not come out from the bowels of the spirit because if it comes out it will come with a touch of eternity even if you've heard it before it will come with a freshness like the dew of heaven how many mornings have you had in your life morning and evening many isn't it but everyone comes fresh that's how it because it comes from a realm of eternity there's no morning that will bore you you say Kai, i've had um maybe i'm 30 years or i'm 40 years and i've had so many mornings or many mm -mm. they come from a fresh realm every time you sleep even after 30 or 40 years you still look forward to that's why the bible tied the message of god to the morning he said they are new every morning freshness many of us lack freshness in our lives you hear someone speaking and you know that this is the only message that he said since five years ago and that's why you hear people talk about the god who was ah i remember when a crusade in 1971 and god did this and that and i remember the lord told me something five years ago the lord did this what is god telling you now did he run away say after me freshness whether a man a ministry an organization stagnation is a sign of the absence of the presence of god there should be freshness suddenly when you think you have come to the end of everything you know suddenly hallelujah that's why the bible says the path of the just is what as a shining light it shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day that means if i look at you pastor steve in 2000 and maybe six or seven by the time i see you in 2014 I should see some an evidence in your life that shows me you have been in the presence of God. How many of you have seen a little child and maybe when you came to school or maybe didn't see the person for five years, and the next thing you turn and ah, you even see the guy has one small beard. I say ah, Bala, you mean this? Now our children have become men. That's a sign that he's alive. Correct? That's a sign that he's alive. Those that you see them looking the same way after 20 years, you know that there's a problem. Because that's not the normal way people should be. Correct? There's a problem. Maybe a health problem, genetic mutation or whatever, but there is a problem. So, when you tell me that you got born again, and after one solid year, listening to the word of God, praying, engaging yourself in the kingdom, and there is no evidence there is no freshness in your life you can't share anything you cannot lead a small prayer meeting hallelujah there are so many people after one year two years three months four months they say just share with us something briefly and you want to enter the grass hey, 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 go over. i understand there's there's that initial fear it's not a fear it should not be a fear of lack of the presence of god it should be that okay i've not done it before but when you stand there suddenly grace will come upon you if you don't deny God in the secret, he will never disappoint you in the open. You know why God disappoints many men of God? Because they don't know him in the secret. We can come and call us all kinds of names. Lily of the Lion of the, uh, the tribe of Judah, Lily of the Valley, what and what, Rose of Sharon, uh, uh, Silver or Gold, all kinds of names. My God! You promised me you wouldn't disappoint me and God is saying, me? When? Asking the angels, when did we say, when did we say, who sent this guy? But when you are a man or a woman of the secret place, you can stand and sing and say, I know my God will answer me. This is why we have the confidence to organize miracle services. This is how we have the confidence to gather people every week because we are certain. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. 
that's why he blesses us with new songs if you leave koinonia after three or four months you will come and hear a new song it's a sign of freshness some of these songs come through dreams some of these songs come through people in the worship team some come through congregations you not any church or denomination or 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 group of believers where god is there there are fresh things the bible says sing unto the lord a new song because he expects that his presence should give you a new experience that should produce new things thank you jesus freshness 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 psalm 36 verse 9 Lord, I love your presence. I love that song. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your what? What's the other part? At least I'm talking to God, not you. Psalm 36, verse what? 9. For in thee is the fountain of light. See, he said, in thy light do we see light. That means when you see his light, you will have direction. The shadow of God is not black. His shadow itself is light. So he says, you, have, you are the fountain of light. As a derivative of your light, if we are truly with you, then we should not walk in darkness. Hallelujah. Number four. And I'll stop here. The fourth thing you receive or the fourth evidence of genuine intimacy is authentic unction and authority in the spirit. What did I say? Authentic unction has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with men of god if you actually meet god and his power dimension does not rub off on you it's not god you met find out the name of that person you met because he's a habali somewhere if he's god the god of israel the bible says the mountains keep like rams in his presence the majestic one who with the breath of his nostrils parted the red sea and you are spending time day after day week after week his power dimension that unction of the spirit will rub off on you that's why you see many people they don't even know let me tell you something when i began my pursuit for god i was not looking for power i'm not sure any of us was looking for power we used to just go and pray and fellowship we didn't even know the anointing was on us i'll never forget Ejimi. when it comes to things like this i like using him demonstration students were in sunday school building he had been angry because he was laying hands laying hands nothing is happening and every time you come back and complain you know Ejimi can be very dramatic and that very day we prayed and he laid hands on the lady and she started moving back small you can oh my god you can imagine the white smile he didn't carry that hand away he laid it there i saw one gentleman doing it in chapel one day i entered i didn't stop him sometimes just leave the people it's an encouragement you don't know how they've suffered looking for that sign hallelujah and so when you touch the lady and she's almost falling you now move from your secret place and come out where everybody can see and say now the power of god will move and act all kinds of drama and god will stop you it's an encouragement a day will come you draw your ears oh, that's too much let's go back to work a day should come when you pray for the sick and someone can come back with a testimony you pray for one thousand people nobody got healed you you are not in the presence of god there must be an evidence the bible says elijah prayed there was no rain he prayed again there was no rain at the seventh time what happened there was an evidence let me tell you something if it is the genuine presence of god an evidence must show a day will come you will stand close to someone who is possessed and without talking suddenly you see the demon just manifest and you say go leave the person in the name of jesus this is how we grew 
that's why our prayer lives were exciting because we're we're wondering what new will god do today hallelujah i remember that time every night was getting people filled with the holy spirit we're so happy i remember one time a jimmy gathered his his classmates and brought them industrial design gathered all of them and said come and see what god will do with you this night gathered them and brought them to chapel we loved prayer because prayer was not this boring thing i see people do it was it we looked forward to exciting times and he was going to pray for them after preaching a sound message pray for them nothing happened they were tired they tried and tried again that day when we were going home jimmy was angry he said god would have at least that he knew what would have happened to their faith if, if, if they didn't speak at least they would have fallen but today by the grace of god we didn't start by speaking over congregations and having the power of god fall on people we started step by step but that step was an evidence that encouraged us and we said man these tongues is working oh, let's fire on and we went for crusade my brother when we went for crusade we saw things that encouraged us so rain had not fallen in that land and it fell correct hallelujah jakes was the head of council in that time bishop was our treasurer we saw the miracle working power of god is your christianity exciting it will not be exciting if you are not in the presence of god there's nothing new god is not speaking to you he's not challenging you god can tell you go and tell ella that i will bless her and that's your first time of the word of knowledge you look forward to that time you are shivering by the time you get there you've forgotten the message you have to find one scripture oh when you stand before them you see this is your christian experience being rich many people's christian life is dry and boring because you don't look forward to any experience i always look forward to friday because i don't even know what god is going to do hallelujah sometimes people send me messages like grace sent me a message this evening she told me how that she saw a a, 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 a vision of the meeting this night I was so excited I said this is the kind of thing I want to hear that one day you were challenged in your health and you say let me try it let me not take drugs this time around if it gets too bad there's chemists they are not locked but let me just try say after me authentic power see whoever you got your power from you will depend on the person for the rest of your life that's why some people can never live some men of god never because they have tied their life and their power there and sometimes pastors we preach and tell people by the time you leave me or you go or you start your ministry or you do this your life will dry away because i'm from the fountain that flows to you look let me tell you something the bible says psalm 133 how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it says it's like the oil that comes from who the head of aaron the priest who is christ and out of the overflow of what is in the head is where the body receives and so your unction should come from the holy one he said ye have an unction not from a pastor they can be channels but the unction comes from the holy one let men and women walk in authentic power i want to see koinonia people casting out devils i want to see you heal the sick doing the works of jesus i'm telling you speaking breakthroughs over our lives standing to legislate on behalf of heaven look at what this lady said her testimony blessed me so much i look forward to times when our testimony on stage will not just be breakthroughs that came as a result of the prophetic declaration but what god did with our hands lift your hands everybody lift your hands say these hands are the hands of jesus upon the earth filled with the power of the spirit with it i will do wonders i will heal the sick i'll cast out devils i will deliver nations i'm anointed the presence of god is with me in the name of jesus you must walk conscious of his presence he's with me he's with me this is what gives me confidence everywhere i go he's with me he's with me i'm telling you the word works w-a-l-k w-a-l-k the word the bible says and god walking with them confirming the words the 
There's no disappointment in ministry again. I found the key. It's the presence of God. I found the key. It's the key to the anointing. It's the key to breakthrough. God told me, if you have me, you have everything. I am telling you, out of his fullness, you can speak over the lives and the destinies of people and doors will open. That's why he's all I have. This is why we celebrate his presence. Every other thing is temporal. But I'm telling you, if you have his presence, you see why Moses said, do not let us depart. He said, I know your presence. Your presence brought us thus far. How many of you will pray and say, Lord, do not let your presence depart. The psalmist said, cast me not away from your presence and take not your spirit from me. There must be an evidence in your life freshness unction authentic power that you shake every demon and devil disturbing your life and you tell yourself as surely as the lord grants me grace i can do it tonight i'm challenging you brothers and sisters the presence of god should be your greatest asset the presence of God commune with the Holy Ghost in the place of prayer in the place of worship in the place of the word in the place of obedience you will find yourself walking in realms you are not prepared for I'm telling you stop chasing after the things that only his presence can give hallelujah who would have known that today by the grace of God we'll be doing the things that we are doing for God many people saw when we started nobody would have known but by his grace by his grace evidence your coming tonight is the evidence that his presence is with us what will men do as the evidence that god is with you how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts 10 38 with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all dead that were oppressed. Why? For God was with him. God is with me. Anywhere God sends me now, there's only one question I'll ask. Will you go with me? If God is going with me, that's all. That's all I need. Many of us do not know the value of God's presence. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. I want you to take it seriously and pray. You're going to say, Lord, your presence. I have left your presence. Many of us only run to God as emergency Christians. Emergency Christians, lift your voice inside and outside. Lift your voice and pray. Your presence, my greatest asset. I take advantage of the person of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the power of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the favor of the Spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Shalakata proska da balakata. Ambra basta ta prekata le kosata. Rabata krasta la kape sekete. Say Lord. Put in me a hunger, a hunger for your presence, a hunger that I will lie down in worship in your presence, soak it in the glory, soak it in the glory. So will you remain fresh, so will you remain powerful. This is a secret I've given you tonight. It's a secret of greatness, it's a secret of glory. The evidence of genuine intimacy, a life of character, a contrite and a broken heart, conviction through faith. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Grace for prayer, grace for worship, grace for spending time in the presence of God. Say, Lord, open me up to visions, 
Open me up to dreams, prophetic encounters. Make your presence real. Make the Holy Ghost real. Make the Holy Ghost real. Make the Holy Ghost real in my life. Pray and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hallelujah. Freshness, unction, authentic power, character, maturity, love for God. These are parameters that let us know whether God is at work in your life. For many of us from today, you must make a resolve to let his word reign in you, find expression, take authority over Satan. Hallelujah. Now, please keep standing. I'm glad to announce to you that we are ready to commence our school of ministry finally. Come on, you should celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. It's one of the great things God is doing. By the grace of God, Bishop Stan will be directing our school of ministry. It's going to be powerful four months intensive weekend programs. Hallelujah. The forms are available. They are free. But limited. We we'll take only limited people. You know that God has called you into the ministry or to be an ambassador. I'm not just talking of fivefold pastor. You know that you have a hunger and you want to learn more, to know more. It's a powerful time. We're going to graduate our students. Hallelujah. We're going to have lecturers from different ministries and different people according to the order of grace that God has given them. It's going to be an awesome time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so please don't be emotional about it and just run and come and collect the form and stop someone who is supposed to. Pastors, whether you're already in ministry, we have people coming from different places. That's why we made it a weekend class. Hallelujah. And it's, it's, it's powerful. You've not seen anything like it, I'm telling you. We trust God that we're going to teach and help our students to become all that God has destined for them to be. Are you happy about that? Stretch your hands towards Bishop as a point of contact. We are praying for the school of ministry. Now lift your hands. Lord Wisdom, this is a new thing you are doing in the house and we celebrate you. He's directing it. Pray for him. Unction from the Holy One. In the name of Jesus, say great responsibility to raise and train people. Say Lord Grace. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, this will be a place where we raise kingdom ambassadors. Men and women of fire. Men and women who will shake their generation in every area. Ministry, business, politics, governance. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now pray for Pastor Jakes. We've also started our missions. How many of you were in Giwa on Sunday? Let me see your hands. Those who went. Hallelujah. It was a wonderful time. By God's grace, we hope to visit the prisons, secondary schools, police stations, anywhere that can be visited. Hallelujah. We are exposing everyone in Koinonia to practical ministry. Hallelujah. Whether you are, we will focus on our students, but everyone. So we can just come and say one, two, three, four, five. We're going to go and pray in the secondary school. And we say, Ella, you are the one who is taking the word. Grace, you are the one who will pray for the sick. You will do anything you know, dear. If it doesn't work, you come back on Friday. So let Friday will now become a time when we we'll gather together. And everybody will tell us what happened. Hallelujah. How many of you believe in what God is doing? It's a new season for us. And we give him all the praise for what he is doing. We thank him for what he's doing in the house. And we celebrate the hand of God. It's a sign of his presence. That great presence. That has been with us right from the beginning. The angel of the Lord's presence. 
he's not left us and we thank him he's left evidences in our midst that authenticate that he is lord and lord we give you all the glory you're here you're not born again you've not given your heart to jesus christ while standing tonight can be the night inside and outside you heard me talking and the holy ghost was speaking to you or you've given your heart to the lord and at one time you found yourself derailing from the things of god with all the love that we have now is the time to welcome you and to call you into a genuine fellowship and a genuine relationship with jesus christ and his spirit right where you are i want you to leave your seat and come out here quickly as the holy ghost speaks to you at the back everywhere as the holy ghost is talking to you inside and outside we want to help you come to know the lord jesus christ or you've backslided hallelujah as the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit back there there are people coming appreciate them they are coming thank you for the courage 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 as the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit back there you need to make a decision for jesus inside and outside for one more minute we'll wait for you and there are people like that hallelujah god bless you god bless you young old this is what this meeting is about hallelujah look at these little children coming out to make genuine decisions you are not clapping when you were their age what were you doing hallelujah thank you so much brothers and sisters now look at me very quickly i want to lead you to the lord jesus this is the best decision that you would have ever made lift your right hand all of you in front say after me very seriously god bless you brother lift your hands say after me jesus i love you and i believe you died for me today i acknowledge that you are the savior and the lord of my life save me wash my sins i receive eternal life into my spirit from today i'm born again i'm a child of god in the name of jesus father preserve these ones spirit of the living god i commend you even to the young ones i pray that you strengthen them by your power keep them oh god let their salvation be genuine let their experiences be authentic in the name that is above all names the mighty name of jesus i pray amen now thank you very much in one minute i'd like you to follow the ushers just just look back you'll see them they'll have your details and you'll come back okay quickly appreciate them celebrate what god is doing dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline